privilege to be here as a guest speaker and uh, uh, to introduce the Indigenous Civilization, uh, which is, I think, uh, very much uh, relevant to uh, different disciplines uh, in, in Pakistan, and it is also related to uh, its uh, center of the ADSC Center. Uh, very uh, few people know about the industrial civilization. Unfortunately, in Pakistan, but throughout the world, it is very much famous, and people are taking keen interest in understanding different aspects of the industrial civilization. So, uh, I would like to introduce what the industrial civilization is. Uh, you are well aware of the uh, fact that uh, in the third millennium BC, uh, uh, civilization occurred almost all parts of the ancient world. Uh, it was Egypt, it was Mesopotamia, it was Syria, it was Iran, it was China, it was Asia Minor, and it was also the land of uh, what we call as in the parts of continent. So this is known as the emergence of civilization because simultaneously in different parts of the world civilization occurred. Uh, in our part, the Indus Valley civilization uh, occurred, which is uh, contemporary with the Egyptian civilization you know well and the Mesopotamian civilization. So there are three civilizations in uh, Mesopotamia. Uh, the uh, Sumerian civilization, Babylonian civilization, and Assyrian civilization. So partially they remain contemporary with the Indus Valley civilization. And it had established trade links just like we have in the modern time with different uh, parts of the world. So. Uh, there are some of the features uh, which are very much common among these civilizations. And two features are very common. One is the riverine nature, and the second one is urbanism, and the third one is the uh, literary uh, society, because society at that time was uh, a literate one. They, they were familiar with the art of writing, and uh, uh, different types of scripts and writings have been uh, found from the Egyptian civilization, Mesopotamian civilization, and the Indus Valley civilization. All the three civilizations of the ancient world, they developed cities. So they around, they developed around urban centers, just like we have the cities of Mohenjo-daro, we have the cities of Arapa, we have the cities of Dolavira, we have the cities of Kalimanga. So there are many large cities in which this civilization flourished. And the emergence of cities is a big contribution of the human society, which goes back to the, uh, to the Bronze Age, what we call is the Bronze Age. So simultaneously it occurred not only in the Indus Valley but in Mesopotamia and Egypt also. And uh, you know that there is proper mentioning of such type of large cities and civilization in uh, the holy book of Bible, even in the Quran and uh, other books as well. So these have been mentioned properly. And uh, the, uh, the, the third nature is the uh, river drying nature. River drying nature means that the civilization uh, developed on the banks of different rivers. So our civilization, the Indus Valley civilization, developed on the bank of the Indus River and its tributary rivers. So not only the Indus River, but also the other rivers uh, which are part of the Indus River system. Uh, just we call them as Ravi, Bias, Sutle, Chenab, Hagra. So these are all part of the uh, Indus river system. And uh, there are big cities, there are civilizations, there are small towns developed on the banks of these. So this is a common uh, feature which is found among all these civilizations. Some of the features are very much unique, which are unique to each and every civilization. So the Indus also.
calculate some of the unique features. Uh, as I mentioned, that all these civilizations, including the Indus one, uh, they flourished in uh, a time frame that we call as the third millennium BC. Uh, uh, the, the, the time frame for the Indus Valley civilization is almost one and a half millennia, uh, which is 3000 to 1500 BC. So this is a large uh, time frame, a long time frame, uh, in which the different phases of the Indus civilization flourished and finally uh, it got declined after 1500 BC. So the beginning can be traced to uh, 3000 and the last stages can be traced up to 1500 BC. Uh, so far, uh, this civilization uh, flourished in modern day Pakistan as well as Western India, even in Saurashtra, Maharashtra uh, states of India, Haryana, and almost all the provinces of Pakistan. Uh, so, so far, uh, 1200 sites have been um, discovered by uh, various archaeological missions and these 1200 sites are dated to early, mature and late Harappan phase. Uh, the sites are now increased because exploration and excavations are still going on in different parts of the world, in, in different parts of Pakistan and India. The, the, the scholars are busy in uh, exploring these sites. But anyhow, to uh, a rough estimate, we can say that about uh, 12 to 1500 sites have so far been uh, discovered. Uh, as far as uh, the mature uh, period or the mature Harappan stage is concerned, so almost uh, 70 to 80 or up to 100 sites are dated to uh, this phase. Uh, when we study these uh, 1200 sites, so we, we come to know that there are big uh, cities of big age. They include Harappa, they include Mohenjo-daro, they include Kalibangan, they include Lothal, they include Dolavira, these include Rakhi Gari, these include Gaririwala, and these include Gandhi Umar Khan and Noshera. So these are actually the modern names of these archaeological sites. What were their names in the ancient times? We don't know that. We only know these sites by modern names. And for our uh, understanding and for our convenience, we have given them as modern names. Uh, uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, you can see uh, that this is the map of the ancient world uh, in which the three civilizations are marked. The, uh, in the Nile Valley, the Egyptian civilization flourished over here, and in this fertile crescent, which this area is known to, uh, which is being watered by these two river Tigris and Euphrates Valley. Uh, so the, the three civilizations simultaneously are um, with uh, uh, a little bit uh, change in the time frame took place in this Mesopotamia, uh, in which the Tigris is the main river and the Euphrates is the main river. And the third civilization, which flourished in India and Pakistan, mainly in Pakistan and partially in Western India, is the Indus Valley civilization, which is also known as the Harappan civilization. If you look at the area which is being covered by these civilizations, you will find that the Indus civilization is covering a large area as compared to the Mesopotamian civilization and in the uh, Egyptian civilization. So uh, this is really a very fertile land and a very important region uh, in which this took place. So the civilization had uh, trade links with one another. The Mesopotamian had trade links with the Egyptian and the Mesopotamian at the same time had developed trade links with the uh, uh, Harappan civilization. So there are also other cultures in, uh, in this part of land uh, 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 through which 
these were connected to the Mesopotamian civilization and the Indusian civilization, and they also had uh, connection with the Egyptian civilization. So we uh, do not find any direct evidence of the Harappan civilization with the uh, Egyptian civilization, but the middleman, perhaps, uh, and uh, this one, they, they, they had developed the relationship with these two civilizations. Uh, this is the map of South Asia, and you can see, uh, can you see these lines? These are actually the rivers. and. If you look at this, this is the plain area, and it is watered by these perennial sources of water which are coming from the Himalayas. So the geography of an area is very important for the development of cultures and for the development of civilization. So why the, the history of this region is rich? So it is because of the geography of this region. So the geography is rich, so therefore the history the archaeology, the heritage, and uh, the uh, cultures of South Asia are very rich. So uh, they, there is some sort of protection. The western hills are there. The uh, northern Himalayas, Karakoram, all these uh, areas are situated. But uh, so that's why it is a very protected area, and it is full of natural resources. There are hundreds and thousands of passes which are connecting. South Asia with Central Asia and with Mesopotamia, etc. So there are evidences of uh, uh, trade and communication, transportation between South Asia and Central Asia. So the richness of the Indus Valley civilization is because of the richness of this uh, important region. Uh, you can see extent of the Indus Valley civilization. Uh, that, uh, if you look at the northeast, so this is the Haryana and Rajasthan province of India, and the Roper uh, site is situated there, so it goes back to the uh, Haryana region where the Roper site is situated. From the northeast up to southwest, this is the coast of Makaran, and the uh, Indo-Iranian borderland, uh, you can see that this covers a very large area. Similarly, uh, uh, the, the, the this, this, this is the Gomal Valley. The Gomal Valley is not included over here, but recent explorations and excavations there uh, attested so many uh, mature Indus period sites in this area. So now the northwestern border of the Indus Valley goes to the present day Dia Khan and Badu region and the northeastern borders of this civilization goes back to the site of Lothal uh, in the uh, run of Kutch in Katiawa region and this is the region of uh, Maharashtra, Mumbai, etc. Okay? So here you can see that the Indus civilization is covering a very large area. It is almost <coughs> one uh, million square kilometers and it enjoyed a large uh, coastal uh, area as well and the coastal area is important because in ancient times the people used to trade through uh, these routes in addition to the uh, land routes. Uh, here you can see uh, the, the black dots show. Uh, I mentioned that there are 1,200 sites. So the, the, the small, the, uh, which is shown in the black dots, are actually the sites of the, uh, the, the ordinary sites, the small towns. And in the red dots are the large sites, the urban centers at that time, which are found. And uh, the, the, the small, uh, villages are uh, situated all around the large center, just like even in the modern time. Uh, now this large kingdom, uh, they, they, there is unity in this large area, but in the unity there is diversity. Uh, there are some unique features which are common throughout this large kingdom. 
but there are small variations in the form of cultural artifact in the form of pottery which differentiate one region, the culture of one region from the other region. Uh, just like Pakistan. So Pakistan is a large country. And we know that what Pakistani culture is. But within Pakistan, we know that this is the tribal culture, this is the Rajasthan culture, this is the uh, Punjabi culture, this is the Pathan culture, this is the Swat culture, right? So similarly, in the Indus Valley, when we study the man culture, so we find that the, there were subcultures in different parts of the world, like the Eastern Daman, which covers the Rajasthan and Haryana, the Harappa Daman, this is the Central Punjab, this is the uh, Western borderland, which covers our province and part, uh, partially Baluchistan as well. And uh, this is the, the Sindhi uh, domain, which covers mainly the province of Sindh. This is the Surat domain. This is the Anarta Calculating culture. And in Baluchistan, particularly in the coastal, are the Kech region. So a culture developed, which is part of the large empire of the Indus civilization. It is known as the Kuli domain of the Indus Valley civilization. Uh, there is a long list of scholars uh, who uh, studied the Indus Valley civilization. So the credit of the discovery of the Indus Valley civilization goes back to uh, Sir John Marshall when he was the director general of Archaeology. So under Sir John Marshall was an officer R. D. Rakhil Das Banerjee. So in 1922, uh, he was actually excavating a stupa over there. And below the stupa, uh, floor level of the stupa, he came across the remains of the Indus civilization, and which was very astonishing for him at that time. And he declared to the world that he has found remains of the uh, Indus Valley civilization, which is contemporary with the Egyptian civilization and the Mesopotamian civilization. Prior to him, Alexander Cunningham and Charles Mason visited another important site of Harappa. But both these scholars, Alexander and Charles Mason, they did not find any material which belongs to the Indus Valley civilization. Alexander, in fact, uh, found some of the seals and some of the pottery, but he failed to recognize the importance of this and assign this to the uh, remains of the Indus Valley civilization. Uh, when Marshall discovered uh, Harappa, so he sent another of his officers, Diya Ram Sahni, in 1921-22 to Harappa. So simultaneously, work was carried out at Harappa by, uh, under the supervision of Sir John Marshall. And uh, uh, another important person, Mackay, John Henry John Mackay, he was actually excavating at that time in Mesopotamia. He was called from Mesopotamia and he was involved in excavation of this area because he was an expert of Mesopotamian archaeology and there uh, were connections, there were close resemblance in some of the artifacts from Indus Valley and from Mesopotamia. So therefore Marshall called Mackey to, uh, to join his excavation at Manjudaro and for four years he remained busy there and he, find, he found the similarities of the Indus connection with the uh, uh, Mesopotamia. He was followed by another uh, junior officer at that time, Kashinath Dikshit in 1924-25 and still an area is known as DK area after Kashinath Dikshit who, uh, so mostly the British archaeologists uh, they conducted <coughs> excavations over there. Uh, Harald Hargruz is another name and Madhu Sarapwats. So Harald Hargruz is the uh, director of Peshawar Museum. He was the curator of Peshawar Museum at that time and also took part in the excavations of the Indus Valley site at Harappa and at Mohenjo-Daro. Uh, before partition, uh, Sir Mortimer Wheeler uh, took over as the Director General of Archaeological Survey of India and he conducted excavations at the Indus period sites as well, uh, Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. Uh, but uh, most of the work was conducted under the supervision of Sir John Marshall. So very little 
work is done after Marshall. Uh, Dales and Kenai worked for some time at Halappa uh, at uh, Mohenjo-daro, but it was only for two years. At Halappa, they carried out excavations, a series of excavations for almost 20 years. That was their great contribution in the field. Uh, we know that this is the Indus Valley Civilization, right? But before the name Indus Valley is given to this civilization, Marshall first called it as the Indo-Sumerian Civilization. Why Indo-Sumerian, why this name? Because he thought that there is a connection of uh, a, a connection between the Indus Valley civilization and the Sumerian or the Mesopotamian civilization. So, on close resemblance of the artifact, he uh, might thought, uh, he might think that the Sumerians actually occupied this region and the people might have come from Sumeria to this region and that's why when an advanced group of people migrate from one region into another region, so again they they started living with same zeal, with same culture, with same traditions, and that is later on discovered by Marshall. So he thought that the Indus civilization is actually an extension of the Sumerian civilization. So that's why he gave the name of Indo-Sumerian. But this was just in his beginning area when he was doing his excavations. Very soon he changed this name. Uh, the Indus Valley civilization is sometimes also called with another name and that is the Harappa culture. Harappa is the main site which is situated in the Punjab and uh, it, the, the Indus civilization is called sometimes with that name also. Uh, there is a third name of the civilization and it is uh, a Mohenjo-daro civilization or a Mohenjo-darian civilization. Uh, but, but this name uh, uh, did not get any proper appreciation from the scholars because it is more a local term uh, which the uh, people of Sindh are actually calling it particularly uh, the, the scholars from Kherpur University, they call the Indus Valley Civilization as the Mohenjo-Darian Civilization. Why do they call it? Because uh, most of the information about the art, the architecture, the religion, the history, it, it is coming from Mohenjo-Daro. So that's why they prefer to call the Indus Valley <coughs> as the Mohenjo-Darian Civilization. Uh, however, the, the, the proper name the modern name or the proper name or the well-established name is that of the Indus Valley Civilization uh, because the uh, just like the uh, other civilization the main source of water is the Indus Valley system the Indus River so that's why Marshall uh, in 1930 uh, assigned the Indus Valley name and still it is intact so most of the scholars agree with this terminology, with this name of the Indus Valley Civilization. Again, there is another group of scholars, particularly the Hindu uh, scholars, the scholars from India, and particularly after the advent of uh, uh, BJP government in 1991-93, uh, which is the uh, uh, Hindu nationalist government, and uh, in this valley, you know, everybody knows that where the Indus River is. The Indus River is flowing in Pakistan. So if you call the civilization as Indus civilization, so it means that it is the very identity of Pakistan, right? And the uh, Indian scholars, uh, they, they, they think that uh, partially the, some of the cities are found in Western India on the banks of Saraswati River, so therefore they call the name to, of this civilization as Sindhu Saraswati civilization because Sindhu and Saraswati are two rivers. Sindhu and Saraswati are mentioned in the Rig Veda, which is a famous book of the uh, Aryans, in which these rivers are mentioned. So they think that 
the Sindhu Saraswati name should be assigned to the Indus Valley Civilization. Anyhow, only these three uh, Hindu scholars, they are uh, uh, frequently mentioning this name. Uh, the, the rest of the world, the scholars of the Western world particularly, they prefer to call the name of the Indus Valley Civilization to uh, this one. Uh, <clears throat> the Indus Valley Civilization, the, the time of the maturity of the Indus Civilization is assigned to 2600 BC and 1900 BC. So there are formative stages before 2600 BC. As I mentioned, the 3000 BC to 2600 BC. So for these 400 periods, the Indus Civilization was in its uh, formative stages and a time arrived that it got its maturity and this time frame is 2600 BC. So the mature phase of the Indus civilization lasted up to 1900 BC. It means that for 700 years, the civilization of the Indus flourished in its mature form. After 1900 BC, then a decline took place and up to 1500 BC, for 400 years again, this civilization vanished completely from the annals of history. Uh, the, the whole, uh, the uh, origin of the Indus civilization is uh, a very important topic and the, there are two group of scholars. Uh, one group of scholars say that the Indus Valley civilization developed from foreign sources, from foreign cultures. The foreign people came to South Asia and they established a civilization in this region. If you are a student of history and you are a student of culture, so you know that how many people from Central Asia occupied this region in which you are uh, uh, now uh, residing, you are now living, right? The Scythians came from Central Asia. The Parthian came from Western Asia. The Kushan came from Central Asia. Even the Turk came from outside, right? The Mughal came from outside. The Aryans came from outside, right? The Muslims came from outside. Mahmud of Ghazna came from outside, right? So there is uh, a well-established fact that most of the people in South Asia are intruders from outside, right? So the same theory, the Western scholars in the beginning, in the absence of pre harappan cultures also adopted that this civilization might also have come from outside and particularly from Mesopotamia. So they supported this theory. Then with the passage of time, a new theory was established and that is the indigenous origin theory. And indigenous means that this, the Indus Valley civilization got developed from local cultures. <clears throat> and we divide now the local cultures into uh, these big periods. The first one we know is <coughs> the food producing era, this, which is followed by the regionalization era, and which is fo followed by the integration era. And again, it is followed by the localization era. So, uh, the food producing is the Neolithic and the earlier stages in which local cultures developed in different parts of Pakistan and India and all these local cultures then integrated into a single culture which resulted <coughs> into the emergence of the Indus Valley civilization. And when there was a failure in uh, controlling this large central area, so a decline took place and again the integration uh, got disintegrated and it changed into local cultures and finally uh, we do not hear anything regarding the Indus Valley civilization. Uh, how many people were living at the time of its maturity in the Indus Valley civilization? So this is a rough estimate which is done by <coughs> George of Dens. <coughs> uh, he says that uh, there are large centers like Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, uh, which is com covering almost 250 hectares area. So it was occupied by almost 35 to 40,000 people. So 
if he says that there are uh, 35 to 40,000 people living in uh, Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, so there are almost five uh, uh, big cities so far discovered. So a population will uh, be in total about 150,000 people, right? And you see that there are more than 70 uh, archaeological sites discovered so far. So if on average we take that these 70 uh, sites were uh, having a population of 5,000 per <coughs> site, so uh, it will take us to a figure of 350,000, uh, right? So 350 plus 150,000 is equal to 500,000 people. So these are the sites which are discovered so far. And we presume that it was occupied by at least 500 people, right? So if again we presume that there are sites which are not discovered so far, and we equate them with the already discovered one. We say that 70, 70 sites are discovered and 70 are still undiscovered, right? We say that five big cities are discovered and we presume that five more may be buried somewhere else, right? So on this analogy, we can say that the uh, Harappan population comprised of about 100 million saul. So, تقریباً 10 لاکھ لوگ جو تھے ہم کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ انڈس ویلی کے زمانے میں آباد ہوں گے دی امپورٹنٹ اینڈ دی بگ سٹی آف دی انڈس ویلی از موہن جداڑو موہن جداڑو از سچویٹڈ ناؤ ڈیز ان لالکانا ڈسٹرکٹ آف سین اینڈ موہن جداڑو مینز ماؤنٹ آف دا ڈیڈ مردوں کا شہر بیکاز اٹ واز ونس اکوپائڈ بائی دی پیپل ہو آر نو مور ایڈ the moment so they died they passed away long ago and only their remains are found now so that's why it is called in local Sindhi language as the Mount of the Dead uh, so it is a large site which is almost five kilometer in circumference and it is covering uh, a 250 hectare area uh, you see that uh, uh, this is the the area which I mentioned earlier uh, that there is a stupa of the Buddhist time which was under excavation by Banerjee and he went below the floor level and he found the remains of uh, a, a, a civilization which is known as the Indus Valley civilization. So these are the different buildings uh, of the Indus Valley civilization, the great bath, the granary, the pillared hall, right? These are the fortification walls. <coughs> Here are a group of ta towers. Uh, the important uh, feature, the unique feature of the Indus civilization is the town planning. This town planning is not reported from Mesopotamia and Egypt, right? So the city was divided into two parts. One part of the city was called as the citadel area or the Acropolis area. So you may also see the citadel area. So this is actually the citadel area of Mohenjo-daro. And the second one is the lower town or the lower city, upper city and the lower city. Uh, it is said that in the upper city, most of the public natural buildings were located. Public natural buildings, you know well what are the public buildings and what are the private buildings. So the public buildings include granary. Granary is, it is a type of a state bank, right? Because in the ancient time, the, the system, uh, the trade mechanism and the trade system was based on barter, uh, exchange of goods and the uh, <coughs> Just like we have the uh, concept of the state bank from which we are getting our salaries, from which the judiciaries are getting their salary, from which the revenue department are getting their salary. So in ancient time, the salaries and things were distributed in, in goods and all the goods were stored in such type of large granaries, right? So it was controlled directly by the state at that time. Uh, so. The, the, the pillared hall or the assembly hall, just like we have an assembly hall 
and it is located in the cantonment area in the and the common people are living in the uh, main city so similarly the public natural buildings were located in the citadel area and the common buildings the ordinary man was living in the lower town the lower towns are situated towards the east and the citadel areas are situated towards the west now what is logic behind this type of uh, mechanism which was adopted by the people of the Indus Valley civilization it is still not known to us that why this, the lower town is situated towards the east and why the uh, elite of the society were living uh, towards the west maybe there is some sort of uh, uh, philosophical uh, approach associated with this uh, that still we don't know <coughs> Another important city of the Indus Valley is Harappa uh, and Harappa is situated in Punjab so again uh, it is also a large city uh, uh, slightly uh, almost uh, um, similar in size with that of uh, Harappa uh, uh, Harappa there, there is a story mentioned in the Rig Veda Rig Veda is the book of the Aryans uh, in which a town is mentioned and the town is mentioned under the name of Hariyupia and Hariyupia is considered as <coughs> a battlefield of the Aryans who fought a war against the non-Aryans so local people uh, had a, a fierce battle with the Aryans at uh, Hariyupia and Sir Mortimer Wheeler <coughs> identified the ancient Hariyupia town which is mentioned in the Rig Veda with the modern day Harappa so he says that it is perhaps the type of uh, the place of Harappa uh, another story is also associated with uh, Harappa uh, you know that there was a Chinese pilgrim Xuanzang who came to Pakistan and India in 625 to 45 AD and he mentioned a city, Pufatu. He mentioned the city Pufatu in central Punjab. And he said that this is a big city. It is almost five kilometers in circumferences. There are four Buddhist stupas, there are 12 monasteries, and there are 12, 20 Brahmanical temples. Uh, <coughs> uh, while excavating the site of Harappa, no temples are found, no monasteries are found, no stupas are found, right? Uh, and Alexander Cunningham, the famous uh, archaeological uh, researcher who was the DG of the Archaeological Survey of India, he assigned that the city of Pufatu would be Harappa. So, uh, in, in historical perspective, Harappa is equally important apart from uh, archaeological perspective. Uh, here you can see is the uh, map of Harappa. You can see the there are three um, uh, mounds or uh, three areas, three units of the same uh, site. Harappa, this is the lower city or the lower town which I just mentioned and this is the upper town. So the upper town is situated again to the west and the lower town is situated towards the east and this is the modern Harappa the modern town the modern Tassil of Harappa which is occupied by the modern people so you just see that one of the um, Chinese pilgrim who mentioned 20 Brahmanical temples and a number of stupas so these are actually situated over here and because the town is occupied by modern people so excavation here is not possible but in these areas excavations have been carried out and the important feature the second unique feature of the Indus Valley civilization is the construction of fortification wall so the towns were fortified with a massive walls just like we have in the historic period but this is the prehistoric period and this is the proto-historic period right so this fortification is a great contribution of the Indus Valley 
who introduced and who gave the same thing to the modern society. Uh, here you can see traces of the uh, fortification walls are discovered. <coughs> the fortification wall usually has a monumental gateway which is used by the people and uh, for the control of trade, for the control of uh, uh, people, right? E even to protect themselves from the onslaught of the uh, invading armies. Uh, in the evening, these doors used to be closed and in the morning they used to be, uh, to be opened, right? Uh, apart from the uh, gateways which are constructed at a regular interval, there are bastions. So here you can see there is a big bastion uh, constructed in the fortification wall at regular interval, right? Just like we have the bastions at Bala Isar Fort. We have gateways, we have entrances, we have uh, entry points at Bala Isar Gate. So similarly, these towns were also fortified uh, just to protect the city from floods, protect the city from animals, protect the city from uh, enemies, etc. <coughs> uh, one of the unique feature of the Indus Valley civilization is this great bath. So this is a very unique feature and which has never been uh, reported from any other civilization. Even in the Indus Valley civilization, uh, it is not found except Mohenjo-Daro. So this is a unique feature of the Mohenjo-Daro architecture. So in the background, you can see the uh, stupa of the Buddhist period, which is relatively at higher point, right? And below which are the remains of the Indus Valley civilization. So you can see this is a hypothetical, this is the actual reconstruction of the Great Bath. So this, the, the Great Bath is a, a place which is said to have been used for uh, social, for cultural and for religious activity, right? So it might have been used for religious activities as well, in which some of the people say that uh, the people used to worship water over here. So it was full of water and the people from different areas used to come and they worship uh, water over here. Some of the people say that this was used for social and cultural events, just like we have a hall, just we have a janazga, just like we have a cinema theater. And we used to go there and you, we uh, used to enjoy things over there. So similarly, this could be a, a social place uh, where social activities took place at that time. Uh, this is the, um, the granary, which is associated with this uh, um, great bath. So it is lying very close to this so because this is also a public nature building and this is also a public nature building so that's why they constructed inside the citadel area uh, if you look at this this is the lower town the lower city and the buildings are situated over there this is the third unique feature of the indus Valley civilization in which the main street the main street is this one and it runs from north to south so it runs from north to south and there is uh, th th this is almost uh, 30 feet wide which is 10 meter wide uh, a main street uh, the main street there are two or three main streets at uh, Bharapa is, uh, and Mohenjo-Daro Mohenjo-Daro uh, we have discovered these streets and the, the main street is joined at right angle by the side lanes. So these are the side lanes. You can see this is the side lane, this is the side lane, this is the side lane, which is being joined at right angle with the main street, right? So if you look at this whole structure, it will give you uh, a pattern of a chessboard or you will see that the modern um, uh, uh, town planning system that we are adopting these days in Pakistan, just like in Ayatabad, in Islamabad, in any other Abad, you will find a similar uh, town planning. Now, the, the architect of the modern town plan goes to the Indus Valley civilization, and this system is given 
by the Indus-Valley people to the rest of the world. So we can see that how civilized the Indus-Valley people were 4,500 years ago, right? And because this is a unique system which they have given. Now, the uh, town planning like this one can only be achieved through a proper knowledge, through a proper background knowledge. You must have an urban knowledge and that's why you can then put all these things, all these ideas on a plan, right? Uh, so it shows that how mathematically these are accurate, right? It shows that there was a proper system, there was a proper mechanism, there was a proper government behind such type of things, right? There was a society which is being run by elite people, by educated people, that, that's why they have constructed such type of construction. Otherwise, construction of city is not an easy task. You, अपने घर में आप जाके देख लें ना आप घर जब आप बनाते हैं आपका वाले साहब एक प्लान लेके आते हैं फिर बंदा बड़ा होता है तो उसकी शादी हो जाती है वो अपने लिए एक कमरा उसमें ऐड करता जाता है ना वो जब घर बना हुआ है तो उसकी शेप पता नहीं कुछ प्रॉपर जो है ना वो नहीं निकल आती राइट बट इफ यू लुक एट मोहनजोदारो व्हिच लास्टेड फॉर 700 इयर्स यू विल नॉट फाइंड सच टाइप ऑफ मिसहैप ओवर देयर सो इट इज अच्छा एक और इंपॉर्टेंट बात यू कैन सी दैट द द हाउसेस दीज आर द हाउसेस द ऑल द हाउसेस आर ओपन टू द साइड लेन टू टू द स्मॉल स्ट्रीट नो हाउस is open to the main street so it shows that how the people of the ancient time used to keep privacy of the houses because no door is open to the main street this this is also a very unique feature of the indus valley civilization uh, these are the ruins of the Indus Valley Civilization and you can see the main street which is almost uh, uh, 10 meter wide. You can see that uh, two or three vehicles can easily be passed even in the modern uh, times. Although there were not such type of vehicles in ancient time except bullock carts which are known there and they can easily be passed. So you can see a large long wall over here and over here and over here and over here, but no house is open to the uh, main street. Uh, these are the side lanes, right? The, the, the small streets, uh, which is almost uh, uh, 5 to 10 feet wide so most of these small streets are 5 feet wide so you can see uh, I'm standing there is a scale and you can guess that how wide the uh, street is uh, the uh, another important feature and it is also a unique feature of the industry that is the construction of wells almost every house has a well or every group of houses has at least a well over there. Uh, and the wells are particularly formed with specialized bricks, right? So you can see that these are the witch-shaped bricks, which has one end narrower than the other end. And uh, uh, these wells are regularly found in the Indus Valley for the supply of water. The next unique feature of the Indus Valley is the covered drain, right? So this is a large drain which is constructed either in the center of the main street or sometime on both sides of the uh, main street and the side lanes. These uh, drains are covered with these such type of large blocks. Now it means that the civic system was very strong at that time. The people and the, uh, the municipal authority used to uh, clean such type of uh, drains very uh, regularly and that's why 
they have been provided in the center of the street and they have been covered. So cover, uh, covering is also a, a very good feature because the people uh, want to protect from the, uh, the, the people from the smell of the drains, etc. So it shows a proper civic system in which the people were very advanced. Uh, this is one of the drains, one of the outlet of the Great Bath. Uh, uh, which is formed in the construction of a core building technique and this is a core build vault uh, which connects this drain with the um, uh, central water tank. Uh, in, in almost uh, every house there is a, a waste area, this is, this is a type of a commode a uh, latrine of the ancient time which was used by the people. So still in sin the people may not have access to such type of luxury but in the ancient time four or five thousand years before uh, they had this uh, facility and it shows the uh, advanced level of the Indus civilization particularly the, the, the civic system. Uh, the Indus Valley civilization is uh, one of the um, area where the people used to manufacture different type of things. So this is one of the workshop areas in which you can see that the uh, jars are placed in uh, at regular interval and it was a dyeing area where the uh, different colors were given to the cloths and to the uh, different uh, things which were being used by the people of the Indus Valley civilization. Uh, Indus Valley, uh, as far as the sculptural art of the Indus Valley is concerned, so very little, a uh, few number of sculptures are discovered from the Indus Valley civilization and these are few of them. So the most important one is this one. This is a figure which is found up to this point. This is just an imaginary reconstruction. Uh, here you can see what type of dresses the people used to wear in ancient time, what type of getup the people had in ancient time, what type of headdresses the people used to have at that time. So it, this is a, a unique sculpture and it shows, um, it, it, it is giving us information about the social uh, life of the uh, people of the Indus Valley. Uh, so this is the only figure people are thinking that this could be the uh, figure of a priest. Some say that this could be the figure of the, one of the powerful kings of uh, Mahajodaro. So the people are not agree whether it is a king or it is a priest. So they collectively call it is a priest king. So this is now known as a priest king. Uh, If you look at this figure, this is also a figure in stone and it is also uh, wearing uh, a lower garment and upper garment but unfortunately the head is missing. Uh, so this is only a head and a bust. So the, the scholars presume that this, uh, this figure also would have been a lower portion like this it would have been shown in seated position like this person. Uh, anyhow, this is just a, a hypothetical reconstruction. Another important feature is the dancing girl. This is a metal object. Uh, here you can see is a um, reconstructed uh, metal object and it is now lying in uh, National Museum of, uh, of India in Delhi. Uh, she is totally nude and she is wearing bangles right from arm to wrist. So still if you go to Third Desert you will find that the people are also wearing such type of bangles from uh, arm to the wrist. Uh, because of her relaxed pose, she has been taken as a dancing girl, right? So if you... Uh, I don't know whether you have seen any Mujra or not, but if you go to Lahore and see, so you will find that ladies are uh, having such type of get-ups there. 
खली के खोज लगा गड़ी गिरा गड़ी गिरा सब तरफ से गुना हुजरा के मुझरी ने दी ठीक है जो मत पोस के जो का देना बहुत बना खाली है हां सो अगर इसका आप गेट अप देखिए द वेयर द ड्रेस अप शी इज एंड द द ज्वेलरी शी इज वेयरिंग राइट सो प्रोबेबली शी इज आल्सो हैविंग द सेम और ये तो मजदूर में एक खातून आई हुई है तो उसने भी अपना पोज इस तरह और वायरल कर लिया तो मैंने फेसबुक से ये तस्वीर उठाई है सो दिस इज दैट माय पर्सन कलेक्शन अच्छा द अनइंपोर्टेंट फिगर्स एंड द ऑफ द इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन आर द टेराकोटा फिगरीज ऑफ मदर गाड़ीज सो दिस इज uh one of the unique feature because mother goddess was very much worshiped in in india and pakistan since the prehistoric time so we have evidences of the mother goddess concept the goddess of fertility uh from the uh, indus valley and from the pre indus period and uh, these are the different figures which are uh, shown in terracotta in baked clay Uh, in which the human figures are shown naked and they are wearing heavy jewelry with different types of headdresses right and sometimes there is uh, if you look at uh, this one so she is holding a baby in her lap and the baby is being fed <coughs> uh, by the mother so this is also showing the concept of mother goddess uh, of the indus valley civilization the other important feature of the indus valley uh, uh, arts and crafts is the uh, the seals uh, the indus seals are very unique uh, they are found in square shape in mesopotamia this, this the uh, the seals are cylindrical in shape but here in the indus valley <coughs> seals are uh, square in shape the seals are divided into two parts the upper part and the lower part the upper part has this type of writing and the lower part has the depiction of an animal right so the seals has two parts the upper part and the lower the lower has an animal and the upper has a, a writing system and it is because of these writing that we can say that the, the society was a literate one we, because we have found direct evidences of uh, writing system and these are the only sources where writing is inscribed on seal some of the writing is there on the pottery but they are <coughs> very limited in number and even the script uh, you can see is not complete a paragraph complete writing only pictures are shown right so you can see that this could be the picture of um, a fish or a man even right so these are shown with diacritical marks right here you can see the uh, figures here you can see the uh, uh, the writing system and this type of writing is known as the pictographic and ideographic writing right so this is not a complete form of writing system that we are using in modern times so only pictures are there and through pictures ideas are communicated for example <coughs> if i say that i am a brave person and you don't know me that whether i am a brave or a coward person but suppose i consider myself as a brave and you don't know so what i will uh, do uh, i will compare myself with a lion right so the bravery of the lion is known to everyone that lion is a brave animal right so i am communicating with you people and i am showing that how brave the people are right or you can also say that uh, because of certain pictures uh ideas are uh transferred for example if you have the logo of peshawar university right so there is nothing written about peshawar university but only the logo is there and by logo you understand that this, this letter is issued by peshawar university this degree is issued by peshawar university right so that logo is 
actually giving you an idea of the ownership of Peshawar University. So similarly, these animals, these writings give ownership of the owners, right? And they were used in in trading commodities, in trading uh, of goods, etc. at that time. Uh, but anyhow, the animals are also unique because if you look at this animal, it has only one horn, right? And there is no such animal exists in the ancient time as well as in the modern time, which has only one horn in this form, right? And hence it is known as the unicorn, unicorn, single horn, egg seeing wala janur, right? So this is this could be a mythological animal, right? So something which we have in our myths and our mythology. Just like Burak ko humne to dekha nahi na, lekin hamare ek belief hai ki ek Burak is kisam ka ek janwar hai, aur ham belief karte hai ki Peygamber se sallam us pe baith ke Miraj Sharif gaye the, theek hai na? To is taraf aur bhi religion mein aap jaake dekh le, so you will find similar type of yeah, yeah, Chinese dragon. Does it exist? Right? Yeah, that's what Mashmi Yarewe Bowra is. Bow system? Is there any animal which we call it Bow? Yeah, you want Balam? Balam is this? Right? So, similarly, these are also animals which exist here in the midst of the Indus Valley civilization. Yeah, look at this one. This is, this could be a tiger, but look at the horns. Do tiger have horn? No. Right? Uh, if you look at this portion, uh, there is some sort of perhaps cloth which is put on top of the, of the animal. If you look at this, at the neck, so he is wearing something. If you look at this one, at this thing, so it is a feeding tray which is just placed be below the nose of this animal. Now this tray, this neck and this shows that the animal was domesticated, right? This is not a wild animal. It was domesticated in the uh, ancient society. There are wild animals, there are remains of the wild animals, but some of them have been domesticated and perhaps it also shows the uh, domestication of such type of animals. Uh, more than 50% of the animals uh, of the seals represent with the figures of uh, 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 unicorn. Uh, but in addition to that, there are also other animals which have also been depicted on the in the seals, right? Like the uh, famous zebu bull, like the famous uh, short horn bull. This is also a short horn bull. This is a water buffalo, elephant, and rhinoceros. Now these animals, which are found on the seals of the Indus Valley civilization, it shows that these were existed in the surroundings of the people. So it was a flora of that time. Elephant is not available in modern time in Sin. Rhinoceros is not found there, but in ancient times, these two animals were definitely there. Tiger may not be there in, in modern age, right? Because the, the ecological setting is totally changed. The environment is totally changed. But in the ancient time, there were such type of animals, right? Uh, the uh, portrait of the Indus Valley Civilization is also a very unique one and Thank you, Kone. Ramzan Pekizi. Acha. If you look at the portrait, there is also a variety uh, in the ceramics of the Indus Valley Civilization and which is totally different from the Egyptian pottery and which is totally different from the Mesopotamian uh, pottery. So the pottery is well decorated with a number of designs, uh, but uh, the, the, the most important pottery is the, uh, these types, which we call as dish on stand. 
So here you can see a stand is attached at the base and there is a plate on top of this right and the, the perforated wear are in the S shaped jar if you look at this profile so it becomes like a S shape of the Roman character and the, the, the pointed base jar so these are the unique pottery of the Indus Valley uh, so here you can see the actual parts uh, which have been decorated if you look at the background of the pottery it is reddish lustrous reddish uh, in, in surface and which is decorated with black color so black on red black is the colors of the design and red is the surface so technically we call it black on red and there are diverse designs intersecting circles uh, the chis uh, board pattern leaf pattern different types of leaf this is the uh, back to back triangles uh, some of the uh, pottery are unique like this one now the, the, the part shape is unique because it is a lidged uh, jar and uh, on the surface of the jar you will find the peacocks so here you can see the peacocks are here here you can see the peacocks the peacocks the peacocks right so peacock is still found in third desert in large number so it was one of the important animal of, uh, of the Indus Valley civilization and the people used to believe in uh, peacocks because uh, it was used for burying of the dead body because inside this pot human bones have been found it means that when a person died uh, his body was left in the open air and uh, after the flesh and the meat was eaten away by scavengers the residue or the bones were put together inside a pot and then it was buried right and the peacock design was depicted because peacock is also considered as one of the sacred animal it is considered as an animal of the paradise because it is used to take the soul of a person from this world to the land of bliss is tarah ke hamare yahan believe hai na ki israel ne salam ek din aayega aur hamara ruh jo hai na wo qabz karke phir apne sath le ke jayega so this is what we believe in and this is what the ancient people used to believe in that the peacocks are the animals which are used for what for taking soul from this world to another world to the to the paradise uh, and that's why they have been depicted on the Achha, uh, if you look at these two uh, scenes these are very traditional and very important uh, it is found on a couple of uh, a pottery from Harappa here can you see what is this heron ye kya hai a bird crow crow ke samne kya hai a picture right so if you look at the story of a thirsty crow which is a folk story so this picture will remind you that story because look at the deer the, the deer is looking backward at the crow and at this picture and in the picture there is some sort of water maybe stones right so this reminds you that how the crow is quenching his thirst and the deer did not why because of the because of the picture which has a low and a narrow uh, rim acha if you look at this one right so this is a tree on top of the tree there are two birds and the birds are having fish in their beaks right and some of the fish are fallen over here right and here is an animal so the, the animal is not clear but it appears to be an animal so again it is a folk story kaun si story hai कि आपकी आवाज़ बड़ी सुरीली है उसकी मुंह में पनीर का टुकड़ा था 
ठीक है उन्होंने जो ही काय काय शुरू कर लिया तो पनीर का टुकड़ा जो है ना वो नीचे गिर गया सो परहेप्स ये तो पाँच हज़ार साल पहले की बात है ना अब अगर मैं एक बात आपसे कहूँ ठीक है और आप सुने और आप वही बात इस कमरे से बाहर किसी और को सुनाए तो हो सकता है कि आपकी तरफ से कुछ ऐड हो जाए फिर वो बंदा अगर और किसी और को सुनाए तो हो सकता है कि उसमें कुछ और ऐड हो जाए राइट लेकिन इफ यू लुक एट द एसेंस ऑफ द स्टोरीज सो इट इज द सेम राइट बिकॉज दीज आर दोक स्टोरीज विच आर इंस्क्राइब ऑन दी सो इसी तरह ये भी कोई स्टोरीज होंगी अच्छा ज्यूलरीज की तरफ आती है द इंड सिविलाइजेशन पीपल हेड दिस क्राफ्ट आल्सो अ वेरी डिवेलप्ड वन and they used to import raw material from outside particularly the carnelian they are imported from iran and these carnelians are then shaped into long biconical beads and these beads are being worn by the elite society by the elite community of the society and even in the royal cemetery of ur in mesopotamia a uh, lady's grave have been found and who were wear in such type of necklaces in mesopotamia which means that these necklaces were imported from the indus valley civilization these are some of the carnelian beads which are bleached with different geometric designs the bleaching is also a technological advancement that how the beads were bleached and how these designs were made right uh you can see the the the, the shell bangles which is found in the shape of a heart you can see these are the uh, other types of uh, precious and semi precious beads uh aajkal to hamare paas paise hai na theek hai jab paise nahi hote the aur log karbar karte the to wo फिर इन चीज़ों को इन कीमती पत्थरों को एक्सचेंज में दे दे देते ठीक है सो दैट्स व्हाई यू कैन सी दैट इट इज अ स्टेप टुवर्ड्स द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अ मॉनेटरी सिस्टम ऑफ द एंशियन टाइम्स अक्सर इंडियन फिल्मों में या ड्रामों में भी आप देखें कोई बादशाह खुश होता था ठीक है और तो बस अपने गले से कोई हार उतार के किसी बंदे को दे रहा था कि ये आपकी खुशी के लिए मैं दे रहा हूँ समझ गए तो सिमिलरली दीज बीज आर आल्सो वेरी प्रेशियस एट दैट टाइम एज प्रेशियस एज गोल्ड इज फॉर अस टुडे इन एंशन टाइम देर वॉज अ प्रॉपर मैकेनिज्म ऑफ weight and measuring and these are the stone weights uh, which were which were used in the indus valley civilization there are different denominations some of the people say that there was binary system some say that there was decimal system all uh, right but anyhow they they, they definitely had uh, their own system of measuring uh, and uh, this is evident from uh, such type of portable objects such type of material culture religion was also a very integral part of the ancient society and uh, these two figures you can see uh, are uh, inscribed on a number of seals uh, four or five seals are found in which uh, such type of figures are uh, uh, depicted uh, the, the, these are three faced figures if you look at this so this is the frontal and this is the side view this is the side so maybe there is a fourth behind this one but anyhow three face figures are always known and if you look at the headdress so he is wearing a headdress in the form of a trishul right in the form of a buffalo horn trishul or horns etc so similarly he is also uh, having a similar uh, headdresses uh the the, the central figure is uh, sitting on uh, a low stool and he is surrounded by animals so maybe uh, in this aspect the uh, figure is shown as pashupati pashupati means lord of the beast right so in ancient time uh, 
every clan has a god every tribe has a god for every activity there used to have a goddess and a god right so we cannot say that there were only uh, monotheism at that time polytheism monotheism time and again they uh, changed by the society uh, with the passage of time आजकल जो है ना हम शिव हिंदू सोसाइटी में अगर हम देखें तो शिवा एक गॉड है हिंदू का तो शिवा जो है ना समाइम इट इज एसोसिएटेड विद दिस एंड दिस फिगर इज कंसिडर्ड एज द प्रोटोटाइप ऑफ शिवा शिव इज पर कल्ट ऑफ शिवाइजम इज पर एज ओल्ड एज द इंडस्ट्रियल सिविलाइजेशन यू नो दैट द हिंदू इज रिलेटिवली अ मॉडर्न टर्म the hindus are not as old as the indus valley but this concept still exists and it, the, the modern hindu might have taken this concept of shivaism from the indus valley civilization uh there are also different animals which are being worshiped by the uh, people of the uh, indus valley civilization and in which you can see over uh, here uh this figure is uh, 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 important because in which you can see there is a central figure and this central figure is holding two tigers uh the the there is a story in mesopotamia and it is associated with a god god name is gilgamesh so gilgamesh is also shown over there that he had a fight with two tigers and this fight is uh, depicted on stone in the indus valley so maybe uh, it is uh, uh, a concept which established in mesopotamia and it is uh, reflected in the in the society also uh, similarly this is also a minotaur uh, a human uh, figure and he and she is holding a tiger also yahan pe aap dekhiye uh, this is uh, uh, a central figure which is standing nude in branches of uh, a tree and the tree is pipal tree right and if you look in front so here is a person who is shown bowing before this goddess and here is a tripod on tripod a human head is there behind this central figure there is a goat and this is a human faced goat right in the lower part are in the surrounding area you can see that there are seven dancers there are seven figures of same height wearing same dresses wearing same head head dresses and they are engaged in a ritual dance right so this scene is perhaps a scene of a human sacrifice before the spirit of the tree right so a human face goat is sacrifice jis tarah ki aap log faras kare koi kaam kare to aap kahe ki main ek bakri ko zaba kar lunga mannat maanunga meri taraf se ye bakri ek sadqa hai theek hai ab galat kaam aapne kiya hai wo sadqa aap bakri ka utar rahe hain samajh gaye na to apne guna aap bakhshwa rahe hain so similarly this tradition could all have also have been existed in the society so <coughs> and that is the reason that the the goat is shown with human face tripod so this is this is not actual this is just a symbolic right so instead of sacrificing a human person a human body or a human being this goat is presented so more we be the push ho jayega ki chale ek bakri ka to sadka meri taraf se aa raha hai na kisi ki taraf se aa raha hai jis tarah ki aap log masjid mein bhi baith dete hain theek hai acha ये आप देख ले दिस इज द आउटपुट ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस के जरिए सोसाइटी को दिखाया गया है कि वट टाइप ऑफ सोसाइटी वॉज देयर इन द इंड सोसाइटी सो बिकॉज देयर ज्यूलरी स्टडीड देयर ड्रेस इज स्टडीड देयर फीचर्स आर स्टडीड एंड देव बीन पुट टूगेदर इन दिस फॉर्म 
और इंडस वैली के लोग शायद इसी तरह देखते थे और ये भी एक झलक है इंडस सोसाइटी की तरफ कि कि इसका आर्किटेक्चर जो था अगर हम इसको रिकंस्ट्रक्ट कर ले तो शायद वो इस तरह बनता है और इसके साथ मैं आपका शुक्रिया अदा करूँगा सो थैंक यू वेरी मच